What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at simple button animations with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at simple button animations with Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in this video, we're going to look at basic button animation. So you can see when I click this thing, it gets bigger and then smaller. We'll probably look at moving it around the screen a little bit. So I've got a file called anim.py, short for animation, I guess, using the basic Kinter starter code that we always use. We've got the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And you can also find the code for this and a link to the Kinter playlist in the pinned comment section below. So yesterday I did a video on Kivi where we did button animations. And Kivi makes animations very, very easy. And a lot of people ask me, hey, can we do this in Kinter? And the short answer is no, you can't. There is no animation thing in Kinter like there is in Kivi that makes it just easy. But like with everything in Kinter, we can kind of hack something together. And that's what we're going to do in this video. Now, I've done some videos in the past on animations in the canvas, moving things around the canvas. And you can check the playlist for those. That's not what I'm going to talk about in this video. In this video, we're just going to, like I said, take a regular button, expand it, contract it, maybe move it around the screen in a very basic way. Now, I just sort of hack this together and it kind of works. You know, maybe you can play with it and make it even better, and uh, it should be fun. Now, the concept I'm going to be teaching you here, you can use for any widget with Kinter. You can use it for an entry box, a combo box, a, a label, anything at all, a frame. You can move it around, do anything you want, uh, any widget. I'm just going to use a button because it's, you know, super easy. So, okay, let's create a button real quick. And I'm going to call it my button because that's what we do. <laughs> this is a button. I'm going to put it in a root. And let's say, give this a text of click me. Woohoo! Right. And we also want to give this a command of expand. We'll make this function in just a second. And let's also give this a font of, and let's go Helvetica. And then, and then let's make this size 24 to start out with. And if we really want to play around, we can make it a different color. I'll just make it foreground red. Okay. So then we can my underscore button dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of like 100 to really push it down the screen. So now let's come up here very quickly and then just define expand. And for now, we'll just pass. Now, let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that looks okay. I'm sure it will. But we can go python and nim.py, run this guy. We get this, click me, button in the middle of the screen. Okay, so no big deal, nothing new here. Now, let's talk about this expand. So what I want to do is use the buttons config function. We've done lots of configuring in the past when we want to change a label or change a, a font or change any sort of thing in something that's already been created, we dot config it. And what I'm going to do here is basically just dot config our button to change the font size and thus expand the button and then contract the font size. And we're just going to put that on timer and use a counter. Boom, boom. And that's it. So let's come up here and let's create a couple of variables. Let's uh, define some variables that we're going to need. We're going to need a count, and I'm going to start it at zero. We're going to need a size, and I'm going to start that at 26 because our font size is 24, and I'm going to go in two, two increments, so 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, all right? So we'll start at 26, so the first one will be two up from 24, which is 26. And, okay, that should do that. So now inside of here, we want to use these guys and we want their values to be accessible if we run this expand function again, because we're going to need to, because it's going to be on a timer. We're going to run it over and over again. So I need to make these global. And let's just go global count and global size. Okay, so let's go if count is less than 10. So our count is going to start out at zero. And every time we do something, we'll add one to the count. And so as long as it's less than 10, now this is an arbitrary number. You can make it 20, you can make it 1,000. We're just going to go from zero to 10. So it'll it'll expand 10 times and then contract back down 10 times, right? So if count is less than 10, what do I want to do? Well, the first thing I want to do is create a size and I want to go size plus equals two. And in fact, we could probably set this to 24. I'll leave it at 26. It really doesn't matter. So here, this will take the size that currently is 26 and it will add two to it. So this will now become 28. The next time this runs 30, 32, 34, 36, until it's done it 10 times, right? So that will change the size. 
Now all we have to do is my underscore button, and let's comment this, uh, configure button font size. And we just call our my button dot config, and we can set the font equal to, and well, we wanna keep it at Helvetica, but we wanna change the font size from 24 to 26 or to 28 or to 20, whatever. Instead of hard coding this in there, we can just use that size variable. Boom, right there. Okay, so if we click this and do it once, this will, this will change once. So let's go ahead and save this and run it just to see if that worked. So let's run this again. We can click it, boom, it gets two sizes bigger. Well, four, I guess. And every time we do it, it continues to expand, right? Ah, right? So, okay, it's not exactly what we want, but we're getting there. So now, every time this happens, let's increment our counter. So let's go count plus equals one. And let me put a space here because I think it looks nicer, but you don't have to put a space. So every time this loops, it'll add one to the counter, right? So now, what we wanna do is put this on a counter and have this continue doing this until we reach some thing. In this case, the thing is count less than 10. So as soon as count hits 10, this will stop. But we want to kind of time this so that we can, you know, time so that we can change the speed that it grows or contracts, right? And to do that, we're going to use our after command. So I can go root dot after and I've done lots of videos on after there's, uh, we created a clock with after if you want to check the playlist. And uh, we've done some other things using this timer. Basically, it's a timer for Kinter. It's this dot after function. And the dot after function takes two parameters here, the time. So we can say uh, 1000, that's one second. And then it takes a command. Well, we want to run the expand function again. So every second, this will run again. So this whole thing will start over and then it'll keep starting over but when it starts over the last time, count will be 11, which is not less than 10, and the whole thing will stop. So if we save this, let's run this guy one more time. We can see, boom, 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008, 1009, 1010, stops, right? We can do it again, nothing happens, right? Count is still whatever. So it's, it's just stopped. Now, that was very slow, right? That was with uh, a counter of 1,000, which is one second. It's 1,000 milliseconds. We can scale this back down to like 100. This is one-tenth of a second, right? If we do this, run it, zoop, it goes a lot quicker. Still not that fast, right? So we can, I mean, we can knock it down to 10 if we want. Was it one thousandth of a second? Run this guy again, zoop, goes very fast. So whatever you want, you can play around with that. So that's cool. Okay, well now it's big. Maybe we want it to go big and then back small again. How do we do that? Well, let's do another if statement in here. Let's do an elif statement and elif count equals 10, right? If it's less than 10, it does all this stuff. But then the last time it still adds one to the counter, which turns it into 10, this runs again. This whole thing gets run again. If count is less than 10, well, it's not, so it'll skip all of this, but it'll then say, well, if it equals 10, what do we wanna do? Let's run the contract function, which we haven't actually created yet. So let's go ahead and create that. Let's uh, comment this, uh, expand the button, and let's comment this, contract the button, and let's define contract. And here, remember, our count is now 10. So we need to start out with the understanding that the counter is either going to be 10 or potentially less than 10 if we start decreasing the counter in this function. So let's go, well, first of all, we need to global count and size just like we did here because we're going to be playing with those variables. And so now let's go if count is less than or equal to 10 because the first time it's going to be 10. The second time we'll decrease it, it'll be nine, then it'll be eight. That'll still be less than or equal to 10. We also wanna stop it when it gets to zero. And uh, we'll talk about that in a second. For now, we'll just leave it like this. So what do we wanna do if this is equal to or less than 10? Well, the first thing we wanna do is size minus equals two. So right here, every time we increment it, we're adding two to the size. 
Here we're decreasing two to the size because we want it to shrink back down again. And here we can just copy this same exact thing right here and just kind of paste that in. And this now size will be, you know, it starts at 26, 28, it goes up to, I guess, 38. Then it'll go down to 36, 34, 32, 30, 28, you know, etc. Okay. And then every time this happens, we want to count minus equals one. So here we incremented our counter, we increased it one every time it looped. Here we're decreasing the counter by one every time this loops. So it'll go back down, right? Okay. And then same thing here, we need to set a timer. In fact, let me come down here and comment this, set the timer. And let's comment this, increase the count by one. And up here, we can probably be a good citizen and say, decrease the count by one. And set this timer, we want to go root dot after, and let's make it again, 10, one thousandth of a second, I guess. And instead of calling the expand function like we did down here, we want to call this function, which is contract. And we pop that in. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. Now this is not actually going to do what we want it to do, but we can at least see what's going on here and, and laugh about it. So we zoop, zoop, oh, and it just keeps going on forever. Our loop is out of control because like I said earlier, we need to fiddle with this count. So we, we, we want this to happen if it's less than or equal to 10 and if the count is greater than zero. After it hits zero, we want this to stop. We don't want it to keep going and then bouncing back and forth, right? So if it hits zero or greater than 10, this whole thing will stop, right? So let's go ahead and save this, run this one more time. Zoop, zoop, right? Zoop, zoop. Now we can keep going and do it over and over again because our counter stops at zero again. And so that allows us to do it because here we started at zero. So when this runs again, the count will be zero after this one finishes, right? Because the last time it runs, it'll be at one. Then it'll subtract one, which will bring it down to zero. Then this will fire and the whole thing will run again, but it'll be at zero, which is not less than or equal to 10 and greater than zero. Zero is not greater than zero. So this whole thing will stop, right? Okay, that's pretty much it. So granted, this is a very sloppy, hacky way to do this, but it does work. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of fun. And like I said, you could do this with anything. If you had a label, you could do it with a label. If you had a frame, you could do it with a frame, sort of, you need to tweak it a little bit. Anything, any widget, you could sort of tweak this to work with. Now, what if we wanna move this around the screen? Well, I'm using pack, which makes it a little bit more difficult, but you know, if you had the grid system, you could configure it to say, move it over to row one or move it over to row six or move it over to column eight or whatever, right? In your config here. Now you can't config these things, but you can grid config or pack config. So let's come over here and just very quickly, this is our expand one. Let's go my underscore button dot pack underscore config. Now we've done grid config in the past. If you want to look up those videos in the playlist, pack config is very similar and it allows us to do our pack configuration. So down here, when we created a button, we set, we dot packed it and we set the pad Y to 100, right? Well, what if we instead wanted to set that pad Y to some other arbitrary thing? We could, we could do it right here. We could go pad Y equals, and I'm just going to set this equal to size. So, okay, we can save that. Now, maybe we might want to do the same thing here. And let's just uh, change button position. Let me copy this comment, and put it here too, just so we're good, good coding citizens, <laughs> right? Okay, so let's run this and just see what this does. This may not be discernible enough for us. Uh, we got a problem here. Button has no attribute pack config. Ah, misspelled config. Did I tell you it was snowing in Vegas today? That's why this video is a little bit late. And that's why I'm a little bit off. So it's not dot config, it's pack configure. All right, so we'll change that there and change that. There we go. Okay, so that should do the trick now. Let's 
clear the screen, run the sky again. And like I said, this may not be discernible. Oh yeah, that's really big. Goes all the way to the top, right? Yeah, up, down, right? So you could set up your own counter instead of using size here, right? Or we could say size plus 100. Uh, let's do this one plus 100 also. See what this looks like. I don't know, I'm just kind of playing at this point. Oh, oh, oh. It's, it looks like it's scrunching itself because the size of our screen is too small. We made it bigger. Let's see, now we can do that. There we go. Now it's kind of moving up and then moving back down. I don't know. Play around with it. But like I said, you could use, we don't have to use size here. We could use um, POS. And here we could go POS. Change this also here to... POS, and then add this here to POS, and then up here, we can set our position equals, what do we want the position to start as? I don't know, started at position 100, because that's what we packed it at originally. And then whenever we did this, whenever we made our counter, we could also, we could also go POS plus equals, I don't know, what, another 20? And here, would we POS minus equals maybe? I don't know, save this and run it, see what this looks like. <laughs> Just winging this at this point, because hey, whoa, yeah, see, let's make this bigger. Right, <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. that's dramatic. <laughs> right? Now, remember, we're doing this very quickly. We can slow this down by changing this timer to like 100. Save this and run it. Yeah, so I mentioned it's snowing today here in Vegas. We're gonna need to make this bigger. Zoop, zoop. <laughs> I don't know. So, you know, this is very hacky and wonky, but play around with this. You could do, you could refine this method. Just understand that we're setting a timer and every time the timer moves, we're just configuring our thing to do something, whatever you want, change the position. You know, we pad wide this, you could pad X this. You could use your stickies, north, south, east, and west. Now, if you're using the grid system or the place system, you can move this around very precisely. We haven't really talked about place very often in these videos. Maybe I will now, because we could use that for this. But uh, eh, it's kind of fun, and as with all things Kinter, it's kind of hacky. But, you know, we do what we have to do. <laughs> it's really, I mean, Kinter really should have an animation function of some sort. And when you use the uh, canvas, you can move things very easily with the canvas. Maybe I'll talk about that if people are interested in more detail. But um, yeah, just for simple things like this, this will kind of work. And uh, you can play around with it however you want. I don't know why you would use this, but maybe some situation where you want to move things around, maybe not in an animated way, but on a timer, move it here and then there or down there or whatever. And this is an easy way to do that. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com and you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.